Hello everybody, welcome to our first video on concepts in Greenfoot. So this video is going to assume that you did spend the two weeks uh, working on your Greenfoot Learning Journal and that you've learned some of the basics by yourself. Uh, I'm going to jump in and just start working on uh, individual concepts, but I'm going to assume that, for example, you already know how to create a scenario um, and to add a world and an actor. So I'm going to make one here called Intro to Movement, and we're going to look today at two ways to do movement in Greenfoot, as well as two ways to get keyboard input in Greenfoot. All right, so um, let's begin by I'll make this world bigger so it looks like it fills our screen. I'm just going to change the super call and make this 960 by 640. You should work with a size that works well on your screen. I could make this even bigger actually because I'm working on a 1080p monitor right now. Sorry, I'm just used to working on something smaller. Let's make this 1200 by 800. That's, that'll be good enough. So now we have a fairly large canvas to work on and we're going to create an actor that we can make move. Uh, we're going to make two, but we'll start off here. Oops. We'll start off here with one and we'll go with something fun that can move in a, I'm going to purposely choose one that's sort of right facing here as opposed to a top down one. Um, just because I think it'll work well for this activity. So let's grab this fish. All right, and to make this look a little nicer, let's give the background an image, some water. All right, so now we have some, well, waterish like background, and we have a fish that we can add in that can do stuff. So far the fish of course does nothing. So let's talk about the different ways you can make stuff move in Greenfoot. There are actually two methods you can use to make stuff move in Greenfoot. And if you wanted to find those, uh, when I say making stuff move, we're talking about actors. So to find the specific details about this, you'd want to grab your Greenfoot class documentation. And when that comes up, let me just pull it onto the screen. When that comes up, these are all actor methods. So if we click on actor, if we click on actor, you can see these are all the different things you can do with actor. And this was where you would find the details about these methods if you want to know more. So the methods we're going to start off looking at um, are turn and where is it? Move. So move and turn. That's sort of one set. Those two work really well with each other because you can turn to face in a direction and then move in that direction. Uh, and the other one we're going to look at is set location along with um, mm. set location along with get uh, X and get Y. So you sort of figure out where you are and then use that to adjust where you want to be. All right, let's start off with the turn and the move. Oh, sorry, while we're at it, as well as turn and move, we have set rotation and get rotation, which allows you to set the angle directly. So if you don't want to turn five degrees, but you instead want to face 180 degrees in the other direction, you can just use set rotation and if you need a formula to know what the current rotation is, you can call get rotation. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at that. So in the code for fish, currently it does nothing. Um, let's go with something simple and say if, pardon me, if greenfoot.isKey down, and we'll go with the uh, up arrow to move forward. So if they're pressing up, we're gonna do one thing, and then I'm going to um, say if, they're pressing down. And we're going to do another thing. So what we're going to do um, is we're actually going to move. We'll move five pixels in the direction we're facing. And if we press the down key, we're going to move negative five. Now, keep in mind, this implies a facing direction. When the actor starts off, it's going to be facing directly to the right. And that is what we represent with zero degrees. So if I put this fish in here, right here, and I inspect it, um, you might actually see this rotation variable right over here. This is the built-in rotation variable. I didn't create it, it's part of actor, and that is the angle at which the fish is currently facing. We'll look back at that after we turn him. But just to show you, if he's facing zero degrees, he should be facing to the right. This also gives you a, short, a little lesson if you're trying to create your own art. Um, if you want to use this sort of turning logic, your sprite or whatever it is that you're drawing should be drawn facing to the right so that you can use the built-in angle system where zero is facing to the right and as we change its rotation it will face in other directions. 
Okay, let's um, try that out so far. If we run it and I press up, he moves forward, and if I press down, he moves back. So far, pretty simple. Let's give him the ability to turn. Um, so the next thing I'm going to say is if greenfoot dot is key down left. Now, if you if I push the left button, I want to turn counterclockwise. So that is going to mean turning negative degrees. I'm going to go with three degrees. We'll see how quick that looks. Maybe we'll adjust it. If greenfoot dot is key down right. And we'll turn three degrees. All right, let's give that a shot. Uh, the other thing I want to do, so I don't have to keep adding the fish, I'm going to add the fish in the code for my world. So this is what I would call adding a persistent object. I'm going to make a private fish called fish. And in my world, I'm going to initialize it fish equals new fish. If you're familiar, if you've done the work on object oriented program, you probably recognize that this is calling the constructor for a fish. If you had code in the constructor, it would get called at that point. And then we want to add that object to the world, add fish to the world. So we would say add object fish, and we have to give it a, a place to spawn. Now I'm just going to spawn it right in the middle. My world is 1200 by 800. So the halfway point is 600 by 400. So now when I compile it, the fish is always there. If I reset it, the fish is there. So now I should be able to turn left or right. And whichever way I'm facing, I can move in that direction. So I can move backwards, and I can move forwards, and I can turn. That is the first way of doing movement in Greenfoot. It's sort of the turning and uh, moving way of doing things. I want to show you a couple things, though. Um, back to what I was doing before, if I inspect this now, you can actually see that its angle is 42. So 42 is almost 45 degrees. So you can sort of tell that 90 degrees would be facing straight to the right. Uh, sorry, 0 degrees would be facing straight to the right. 90 degrees would be down. Um, let's see if I can face all the way to upside down here. It'll be around 180 degrees, right? The rotation is now 174. Can't quite get it, but uh, if I wanted, I could set that directly to 180. So how could I set that directly to 180? Let's say I wanted to make him face exactly in the opposite direction. Uh, so back to my code here, um, I can make a function here. I'm going to say if green foot dot is key down, we'll just pick a random key um, for lowercase b. And if that's the case, then what I want to do is I want to set rotation to 180. So this will allow me to, instead of turning relatively, turning will take where, where you're already facing and add three or subtract three. When you set it, it just says set that as a number. So now I can, let's just pull this up here to demonstrate. I can move around the way I was before, right? But if I press the B key, it faces exactly 180. And if I pause this and inspect it, we will see 180 degrees. Okay, hopefully so far so good. All right, so let's talk about the other kind of movement in Greenfoot, and that is, let's move this up a bit so I can see it. Um, the other type of movement in Greenfoot is the is key down method. So there's a few things you need to understand about the is key down method. Um, the reason it's different, oh, did I say is key down? I meant get key. We're already doing the is key down method. Please forgive me. Um, the get key method will allow us to get a single key press. So if you were going to use this to try to do some, for example, shooting is usually the example I run into, uh, and you used is key down, it will spam that button. So if you press the space bar to shoot, and shooting makes um, a projectile come out, let's actually demonstrate that. We can do that pretty quickly. Let's make a projectile. We'll call it projectile. And we'll give it a simple graphic. Okay, and if this sh all this is going to do is move to the right. Actually, let's for fun, let's make it a little bit more complicated. We're going to make it a public projectile. And it's going to take in a angle so that whatever direction the fish is facing, it can face. And I'm going to say um, set. Uh, okay, we'll do it this way. Private and start angle. Start angle equals angle 
All right. Um, so let's say that is the starting angle. And then here's another tip that I'm going to go over in a separate video. Um, but there is a method in Greenfoot that a lot of people don't know about, and it's the added to world method. Um, it is a automatically called method. It's part of Greenfoot that just isn't well advertised. Uh, and this basically gets called when you call add object. So if you look back at the world here, when we made this fish, first we declared the fish and then we added it to the world. When we declare the fish, or sorry, in initialize the fish with the new command, this is declaring the fish up here. When we initialize the fish, we call its constructor, which means that, oh, sorry, it's a projectile. If we were initializing a projectile, we would call its constructor. However, when something gets added to the world, so this step here that we do on all of our actors, it's calling, it will call this method if it exists. This exists in the super class as a empty method, so nothing happens. Um, but you can extend it and make anything you need to have happen. So in this case, I just want to start a starting angle. This is a good place to set up your angles and your positions and your images because in the constructor, you can't use any methods that require you to be in a world. You are not in a world when your constructor is being called, but the added to world method is called when the world has sort of been determined when you are getting added to a world. So all I'm going to say is set rotation to start angle. And that should give me the ideal starting angle. All right, so the last thing we're going to do in projectile is we're going to make it move. Uh, so I'm going to say move, and we'll just give it a random speed of five. And I'm going to say if, hello, Matthew. Sorry, my son came to say hi. Um, so we're going to say if, um, is at edge get world move object this Hi again Matthew um, and this will effectively remove itself from the world when it reaches the edge let's see if this all works now so we're gonna say um, we're gonna use the get key command here I'm gonna delete this one here which I'll leave that for the moment So I'll talk in a few minutes about where to actually place this because this is not where you'd really want to put it, but this is a good way to demonstrate it. So we're going to use the Greenfoot helper class and inside there's a method called getKey. The important thing to understand about getKey is that it can only be called once per act program wide, which means you can't have one in the fish class and one in the projectile class and one in your you know, enemy class and one in this and one in that. You can only have one getKey method. Generally speaking, therefore, you want to put it in the world. In the world, um, you'll find that is, it's sort of a central place to put it so that it can communicate it to all the other actors. Right now, I'm putting it in an actor just for simplicity's sake. So um, I'm going to say if k is not equal to null. Now, remember, when you get a key, there's a very good chance that nothing is being pressed. And so you have to take care of what happens if it's null. Null means nothing. So if they haven't pressed a key during that act, it would be um, null, and it's really important to uh, note that because if you don't, you'll get a null pointer exception as soon as you start running the program. So I'll say if k is not equal to null, I'm going to say if k dot equals, and I'm going to use the space bar to shoot, so space is just called space. And then what I want to do is create a new projectile uh, and add it to the world. So I'm going to make a temporary projectile meaning I'm not going to declare it as private and put it in my variable section because I really just want to create it and then use it and then be done with it. So I'm going to say projectile p equals new projectile. And you may notice, uh, may remember that I added a variable here in my projectiles constructor, and that is the starting angle. So I actually want it to shoot at the same angle that the fish is facing. So I'm going to say get rotation. Since I'm coding right now inside the fish class, get rotation will figure out what is the current rotation of fish. All right, and um, I'm going to add it to the world. I'm going to add it at the fish's location. So get x, get y. Uh, in order to make it appear like it's not coming, oops, sorry, I forgot, get world, we're not in the world here. Uh, in order to make it appear like it's not um, starting right on top of the fish, but in front of the fish, so it's shooting out of the front of the fish, 
I'm going to move it up just a little bit. Uh, so I'll just move it, let's say 10 pixels. And that'll just happen once when it gets created. So it appears before you even see it so that it appears like it's coming out of the fish. Now let's see how that works. All right, so we have our fish and if I press space, he shoots in the direction that he is facing. Now you'll notice that if I hold down the space button, I only get one shot. So holding, you can't see me holding down, you'll have to believe me. This is ideal for stuff like shooting because um, you don't want to be able to hold this down and have 100 uh, shots come out very, 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 very quickly. You want to have the user have to press the space bar multiple times in order to shoot. All right, so that concludes the first demo. I'm just going to go over sort of what we've seen here. We've seen the move and turn way of get, doing movement in Greenfoot. We've seen the is key down method of getting keyboard input, which can be this one can be used freely anywhere you want. We've also seen the get key method, which I did note should be in the world. Um, not as I've done it here. This was just for demonstration purposes. We check if it's null and if they, something has been pressed, we check what it's pressed. For one last thing here, I'm actually going to change this one. We want this to be a one-time thing too. We don't want it to constantly be changing the rotation to 180. We just want it to happen once. So I'm going to grab this from here. I'm going to delete this. And uh, I'm going to say here, uh, else if k dot equals b. So if they press B, any key that you intend to have held down, like movement keys where you hold down the arrow to keep moving, get key is, sorry, is key down is usually the way to go. Anything where you want to press a key, have to press a key one time per action, uh, it's better to use the get key uh, method. All right, so I'm going to post this example directly onto uh, a link right where you found this video so you can see the example code yourself. There isn't all that much code to it. I hope you found this first video helpful and I will see you next time.